Greetings, it is August 4th, just after midnight, and I wanted to show you some time delineated data that was captured approximately 6 p.m. yesterday. Uh, these screens are going to run for about 10 seconds each. Uh, we're going to go around the fire perimeter and look at what hotspots are new, what hotspots are 12 hours old, and what spots are 24 hours old. So here we go. This is Highway 97, Highway 99. Uh, this is uh, six hours, nothing. And there's 12 hours. So those spots have been around for 12 hours. And there is 24 hours. So those spots have been there for 24 hours. So, no new spots in that area as of 6 p.m. There is the perimeter map showing how far the fire line is. Now we're going to move a little north to Clinton. That is the six hour time frame. Now we see some spots come in on the northeast. Those have been there for 12 hours and there's what's been there for longer than 24 hours so you can pause these screens and take a look and see how it's progressed and there is the fire perimeter I'm doing it in reverse so that you can see what's new first so here's the chasm this is all the latest hotspot development within six hours prior to 6 p.m. yesterday so now here's the 12 hour so those spots have been there 12 hours and 24 hours so there's not a lot of new development there it's dealing with old hotspots and there, of course, is the fire perimeter. Okay, we're going to go to the northern flank. There is the new developments uh, six hours prior to 6 p.m. yesterday. There are 12 hours earlier. So those, are, those look like they're patterned and here is the hot spots that have existed for 24 hours and there is the fire perimeter for the northern flank and there is a scale at the bottom of the screen and it'll help you gauge distances now we're looking at the northeast flank that's what's happened most recently not much. I'm not seeing anything. Okay, there's what's happened in the last 12... That's, those spots are older than 12 hours. And those are the spots older than 24 hours. And here is the perimeter of the fire on the northeast. So again, not a lot of recent development of hot spots. All those, the majority of those are older. Okay, now we're going to that area by Loon Lake. Again, this is the most recent hot spots under six hours. There at 12 hours in the northeast corner, you can see four spots coming up. And here's the oldest ones. And you can see the concentration at Upper Loon Lake on the west shore there. And there is the fire perimeter. I'm noticing two hot spots out of the fire perimeter on the east side of that flank. Okay, now we're going to High Heum. Again, these are the most recent spots. Nothing new developed. These spots are older than 12 hours.
and these spots are older than 24 hours. So that's what we want to see is no new development. And again, here is the fire perimeter on the eastern flank. You can see around Hyheam it's still remaining clear, but there is that large concentration that's lasted for a long time now. Okay, we're down at the southeast flank by the Cache Creek Hills. No new development. Twelve hours ago, there was some development. And here's all the spots older than 24 hours. So those have been burning a long time. Nothing new really in that region. And here's the fire perimeter. Uh, we can see two, three, four, five spots just outside the fire line. Okay, we're going to zoom in to Loon Lake here and take a closer look. No new spots. Not within the last six hours. There, at 12 hours ago, there was a few hot spots. Uh, Upper Loon Lake and south of Hyheam. And there's the spots that have been older than 24 hours. So you can see a lot of these are not new flare-ups. They're entrenched areas of volatility. Okay, and there's the fire perimeter. Okay, now I'm going back to the area just at Loon Lake Road where it joins Highway 97. No new spots in the last six hours. There's some 12-hour old spots. And here's the older hot spots that have been there for over 24 hours. And there's the fire perimeter and you can see that portion that just jogged over Highway 97. Okay, now we're going to look at an overview of the entire area and this is quite interesting. The satellite's calculating uh, almost 110,000 hectares with 18,650 hot spots active. So that gives you an indication. So we're, we're going to check back on that number and see whether it's going up or down. 18,650 of us could each grab a shovel, go out and assist the crews and beat that down and it would be done in a day. But it doesn't work like that. So we're going to keep looking at it and I want to just express my gratitude to the people on the ground and the support and all the air crews and what they're doing for us here. Uh, it's amazing sacrifice to go into a fire zone and fight it. it it's, it's a war. Okay, let's jump over to Windy and take a look. We've got those northwest flows coming through, it looks like for the foreseeable future. Uh, nine kilometers an hour right now. Uh, we might have some higher wind speeds tomorrow, it looks like up to about 13 kilometers an hour and that should taper off and just be a constant consistent flow from the northwest and my uh, heart goes out to the people south, uh, Cache Creek, it's going to be smoky. Um, down in Logan Lake we saw some photos on the w dry BC webcam, it's quite thick down there. You're going to have to search for some relief, perhaps uh, heading eastwards. I don't know how far you'd have to go, Banff maybe. So that's the situation right now in kind of an overview. We were able to see what the newest hotspots were, what the 12 hour old hotspots were, and what the 24 hour and longer hot spots were. So I'm not seeing very many new infrared data points. What I am seeing is a long term areas that have been burning hot for quite a while and these I am assuming that the crew is concentrating on to 
contain them, to take away the fuel, to starve the fire, and have them eventually burn themselves out. It's going to be a long process, but I feel a little bit more positive after what I've seen on the satellite data, and I hope you do too. I hope your area is improving, and maybe I'll do a video that talks about some of the successes that uh, areas that have now been cleaned up and we'll see how it goes. We're always crossing our fingers. <laughs>